A market suffers from congestion when you have too much of a good thing, when users are just overwhelmed by the number of possible transactions. And we saw on the previous slide that congestion is sort of an inevitability in the kinds of markets we're talking about where there are strong network effects. Now again, congestion is the problem you want. Much better to have more participants than you know what to do with uh, than with too few. But still, if you have an overwhelming number of available transactions, you need to do something to keep the market running smoothly. Specifically, if you have a decentralized market, meaning participants are able to choose their own transactions and you have congestion, then there's just far too many options uh, for users to explicitly evaluate. So you have to do something. Now, in some cases, this is as simple as sort of just building really good search functionality or really good recommendation system uh, into your platform. But sometimes you need to do more. And I want to talk about one specific thing you could do in, on top of that, uh, which is signaling. And the idea here is really to sort of artificially increase the cost of transacting, which thereby instills sort of new meaning in an offer to transact. So let me explain what I mean. Signals come in different types. So one type of signal that we're all familiar with is you signal your qualifications. So you do this, for example, when you're applying for college. You signal your qualifications by reporting your uh, test scores, your grades, and so on. Similarly, you signal your qualifications in a, in a job application, a dating profile, et cetera. Uh, we're not going to talk about that right now. We'll talk about that in module three in the context of adverse selection. What I want to talk about instead is the use of signals to indicate exceptional interest in a particular transaction. One example of this kind of signaling, which is probably familiar, is applying early, so early admissions for college, either binding or non-binding. So that signals exceptional interest in that particular transaction, meaning attending that particular school. And crucially, for this to work, you can only apply early to one place, right? That's what gives the signal meaning. You, know, you signaled this college, you wanted to apply there, and they know you didn't signal anybody else. And so that's why it's a credible signal of exceptional interest in, in that particular school. So drilling down into this latter use of signals to, to signal interest, let's see a couple more examples. One interesting example is in the market for economics professors, so for jobs. Now, in pretty much any field, economics, computer science, whatever, um, there's, you get lots and lots of applications. So, you know, often it's sort of hundreds of applications per open position. So that means it's totally out of the question to say, you know, invite everybody for a face-to-face -face interview. You have to make a choice, hard choice, of which subset of those are you going to invite to visit you and interview with you so you can assess them uh, more seriously. So maybe you invite eight out of these hundreds, maybe you invite 12, whatever. Now, if you're in the top ranked department in your field, uh, it's not rocket science, kind of which of the applicants you should invite. Generally, you know, to first order, you're just going to be inviting the strongest ones, or at least the ones that appear the strongest, uh, given the information you have, given how they look on paper. But if you think about it, if you're not the top ranked department, if you're more kind of like a you know, middle tier department, this may not be such a good strategy for you. Right, because what you're worried about is if you brought in the 12 strongest applicants, your concern is that they might all uh, turn you down for more prestigious offers uh, at higher ranked departments. And then that would be an epic fail, right, for your recruiting season. You, really, you literally would have nobody to hire. And what that means is that if you're a mid-tier department, it makes sense to interview at least some applicants who are at least a little less strong than the strongest ones. But of course, the question is which ones of those should you invite? Now. One negative consequence of this uncertainty is that there are always some applicants who slip through the cracks, meaning they wind up not getting offers from any of the departments that they interviewed at, but they didn't get interviews from lower ranked schools because those schools incorrectly guessed that the applicant was out of their league. And this is a problem in pretty much all fields, but the field of economics decided to um, you know, try to have an economic solution to this problem in the form of costly signals. Uh, so they took a cue from the way college admissions are done, uh, and it is now possible for each applicant to send a special signal, it's non-binding, but a special signal through a third party to, at most, two different departments. And it's crucial that the number of signals you can send uh, is bounded. That's what gives them meaning. And the intended use of one of these signals is to signal your interest in a department that might otherwise think that you wouldn't be interested in them. 
So you wouldn't really, you know, send it to a top department. The top department would just assume that you're interested. You might send it to a sort of a mid-tier department uh, where you happen to have a lot of family or where you like the area or you have some other reason um, why they would actually be a, a pretty high-ranked choice for you. So that really is in use, this use of costly signals to try to make the economics uh, professor market uh, run more smoothly. It's not that obvious how you do a rigorous empirical study assessing the effects of this uh, signaling scheme, but at least the anecdotal evidence uh, on both sides, both on the sides of the departments and the sides of the applicants, uh, the anecdotal evidence has been largely positive. So that's one example. Uh, the last example I want to talk about is let's return to dating platforms. So dating platforms definitely suffer from congestion. In particular, the most popular profiles receive far too many messages than the user can handle. Or even, it's even hard for an algorithm to sort of recommend which subset of those messages uh, the user should focus on. So way too many messages to the most popular profiles. So this again, you know, it seems maybe like this is somewhere where costly signals could help. And indeed, about five years ago, so in a paper published in 2015, uh, two economists ran a field study in collaboration with a Korean data site. And in this experiment, uh, users of this dating site were given two quote unquote roses per week. So a user could send a very large number of messages, but could only attach a rose uh, to at most two of them over the course of a week. So again, costly signals. Uh, it's actually meaningful if you attach one of these to one of your messages. Um, one of the reasons they paired up with this Korean data site is, is that company gave them kind of amazingly rich uh, information. Um, so all of the relevant data about the users, including uh, score uh, computed internally by the dating platform about how desirable um, each of the users was. So this provided a measure of how effective the rose signals were by comparing the probability of a message reply with and without a rose controlled for the desirability score of both parties. So on that basis, they were able to conclude that indeed um, the use of roses uh, was, was good. So in the sense that it increased the probability of message acceptance um, and also it just it seemed to increase engagement by the users. You just had more messages um, going across the platform. So that was kind of middle of last decade, 2015 or so on this Korean data site. Um, and these days uh, you see very much the same idea on Tinder in the form of their super likes. So again, these are sort of limited signals. You can only send uh, a small number of them. Uh, and so therefore it adds meaning to those uh, transactions. I don't know if Tinder was sort of directly inspired by this, this work in economics or if they came up with it independently, but in any case, very much the same idea deployed today uh, in one of the most popular dating platforms out there. So that concludes our first module on markets everywhere. Uh, and again, I hope the main takeaway from this module for you is just that, you know, if we look at the technology that exists all around us, you know, that we're using every day and that even, you know, some Columbia undergrads will go on and sort of join those companies uh, post-graduation, uh, while it's about technology, incentives really play a crucial role. Uh, and the, the successful systems, they've made some smart decisions about how to manage incentives for the users of that platform. So with this context in place, you know, the fact that you know, computer science and sort of economics and game theory really do have a conversation to be had. Uh, in our next module, our second module, I want to talk uh, about maybe the most famous example in game theory, uh, the prisoner's, prisoner's dilemma. And then we'll see how that inspired certain ideas, particularly around reputation systems, uh, again, in the technology that's all around us. So I'll see you there.